According to multiple reports, a bargaining session between Major League Baseball and the Players Union took place today but produced little progress towards a new collective bargaining agreement. The union offered tweaks to its arbitration demands while asking MLB for more money in a pre-arbitration bonus pool. The sides met on the 78th day of the lockout and one day after spring training workouts were supposed to begin. Let's take a look now at carrying the load, which is brought to us by the Chevrolet Silverado. We do have a time timeline of today's events between Major League Baseball and the MLBPA. This according to Evan Drellich. At 12.59 p.m., MLB arrived to hear the MLBPA's latest proposal and thus another collective bargaining meeting begins. 19 minutes later, 1.18 p.m., the meeting between the MLB and MLBPA has ended. Time now for the Daily Thread. We got Tomasi and Giles here. What do you think happens in those 19 minutes? I, look, honest to God, guys, what happens in 19 minutes? And, and, like, to me, this is an indication of how far away the two sides are, that they can't even stand to be in the same room together for more than 19 minutes, Tomasi. Yeah, so I'm starting to get legitimately worried about this, not being a case of, oh, once the season gets close, they'll come to an agreement. The lockout has been going on for 78 days. They have met face-to-face -face six times, so they're meeting once every... 13 days, or 14, whatever it is. You said they're being... And, yeah, sorry. Uh, and they're making zero progress. This is an owner-imposed lockout. The owners are the impediment to making this deal happen because they want to break the union. They want to break the union in terms of they like how it is right now. If you let the owners keep this system exactly in place as is, They'd say, fine, oh, we want expanded playoffs, and we don't want to give you anything for it, but otherwise, we're fine. That tells you all you need to know. They know they hosed them in the last CBA, and they want to hose them in this one, too. So I understand. I agree that this is on the owners. The problem is that when the players are fighting for stuff like Super 2 and arbitration and these things that, as baseball fans, you really can't understand, mm -hmm. you start sitting there, and you're like, well, what are you, what are you arguing about? Uh, arbitration, two years, three years? It, it just... That's difficult for the casual baseball fan to understand. And so then they go back to, well, the players are so reluctant to kind of change the game and try to change the pace of the game. And whenever there's a rule change, they drag their feet. That's why I think the owners are, are actually somewhat benefiting from the fact that people look at this and say, well, the, the players are just as much at fault. Just look at everything else they've ever done. Can I jump in real quick? Yeah. So I, I blame you, the owners, by the way. You talk about pace of play. You talk about things fans care about. These are things that we all care about. It's like, can you speed up the game? Can you get rid of shifts? Can you eliminate three true outcomes? Can we not have to ever watch an opener again? All of those things we care about, none of that is on the table. None of that is being right. discussed. None of that has anything to do I understand. with this. But, but the problem is that I don't think many baseball fans understand the Super 2 and the arbitration yeah, you know and the bonus pool money and everything for? else. Players are fighting for the younger players to get paid. It's kind of an anti-union thing. Usually the unions are all about, we want the guys at the top making the absolute most and then let it filter down. It's their version of trickle-down economics. They're starting at the bottom and saying, we want the underpaid guys and to I'll, be paid. And I'll be honest, for a long time I've always sort of almost evenly blamed both sides with slightly more, you know, blame on the owners. And then I started, I, I mean, it shifted for me almost completely to the owners when I actually read some of what the players want that in a way would make the game better. Listen, minimum salary, I'm not even going to say on here what they want because if you're sitting at home and you've been, like, out of work for a long time or something or you're working a job where you're, like, clamoring for $15 an hour, you're going to be like, oh, cry me a river that you get $5.50 and now you want $7.75 as your minimum. But the one thing I love about what the players want is that they want a minimum um, payroll. So they want it to be where you actually are competitive. They, that is the one change that they want. They want it to be so that if you are the Milwaukee Brewers or the Kansas City Royals or the Tampa Bay Rays, you can't just suck. You cannot just be terrible. You have to spend money, and the owners don't want to spend so, money. But All why, they want to do is save money. Why, why, why don't the owners want to get on board with this? Uh, the salary floor they're a little bit more on board with because you have big owners like John Henry who constantly hate the fact that they have to subsidize these teams when they know that the teams are really valuable, like the Pirates and these teams that won't spend. But the owners are reluctant to give an inch on anything. If you look at who's been making concessions, it's the players. The players have backed off on a few things about arbitration and how many players they want to be paid and all of that. The owners will not back off on the luxury tax. They will not back off on what they want for expanded playoffs. They want to take. They don't want to give anything. And that's why we're at an impasse. And I, I would say the one other thing that the owners – 
should look at as well is how much money they can make on sports gambling as well. Okay, I'm, I'm serious. Giles is here. Giles I'm serious. Here. Look, 30 states now have it legalized. What are people going to be betting on when it comes to June, July, August? Those months when there's nothing else going on. Maybe they think, oh, we'll be back at that point. You need look. There's an opportunity now. People are going to be invested in these games. They're going to be interested from April from the jump. If you just go ahead and play baseball, there's going to be money there to be made. I would also say that unlike the NFL, the, the uh, MLB union is strong because you don't have, even though your lowest level players don't make as much as your top level players, everybody makes a lot so they can sit time out. They can sit time out in ways that an NFL team cannot, so they will sit until they get what they want.